And we're live. Welcome everyone. On behalf of Hope Residents, I'd like to welcome you to today's session with our expert panelists, Louise Sunshine and Frederick Eklund. Hello. Louise, you're supposed to say hello. There you are, smile. Hello, everybody. So I'll start by introing you both, Louise. Real estate expert Louise Sunshine is currently the strategic advisor for Fort Partners and president of Sunshine Advisors, a company specializing in meeting the real estate challenges of today in new development. At Fort Partners, Louise has overseen the creation of both Four Seasons Hotel and private residences at the Surf Club and Four Seasons Hotel and private residences in Fort Lauderdale. Louise continues to achieve record-breaking sales for both developments. Welcome, Louise. Thank you very much. And Frederick, as the founder yes. of CD member, strong Eklund Gomes team. Eklund and his business partner, John Gomes, have secured more than $14 billion in sales over the past decade with $2 billion in last year alone. Eklund closed 842 transactions in 2019 and successfully sold more than 130 new developments over his career. The Eklund Gomes team has the exclusive listing for Fort Seasons, Fort Lauderdale's $35 million penthouse, which we will take a look at today. And our moderator for the day is our co-founder of Hope Living and Hope Residence, Seth Semloff. I'll let you take it away, Seth. All right, well, let's get right into it. First of all, thank you so much for your time, Frederick and Louise. So you guys are working together again. Tell us more, how is that going and what have you been up to? Okay, I think we have some we have some audio. If everybody who's not talking could put themselves on mute, maybe. Um, so maybe you could start, Frederick. Well, I think working with Luis is really exciting. Um, we uh, um, are two big, big personalities, as you're going to see in this call. Sometimes we get in a little bit of fighting, but I think deep down there is a huge respect for one another. She is such an icon to me. Uh, there you are, beautiful, hi. And hi, I I've... had this thing covering my face called Quick Pole. Yeah, but just close that. So okay. what I was saying is that um, I love her and I don't say that lightly. Um, she, she was always an inspiration to me. Like people have said to me, Frederick, you inspired me to get into real estate. And when I came into real estate, I saw you. So I have to say the same thing about her. You know, when I was a, a nobody, a, a, a young broker in New York, I read all about her. I even remember her website with that spinning planet or whatever it was with buildings surrounding it on the Sunshine uh, website. And she, of course, did some of the most iconic projects that I wanted to get into that I wanted to sell. So, you know, to sit here, talk to her, more importantly, you know, work with her on something so iconic as the Four Seasons brand and a $35 million price point is really exciting. You know, it's not all easy to work with Louise. And I say that with a smile because it's, you know, she throws these grenades and she is a power house. Ah, I'm trying to move at the same time. And, um, you know, but she, there's no one more seasoned. There's no one more uh, experienced and there's no one, really no one, I can't come even close that have sold uh, more record-breaking prices. Really an honor to work with you. So uh, I guess all my life I've been disruptive in the marketplace because I've lived by the phrase that I coined and patented, which is all square feet are not created equal. And that is the theory that I live by. And I'm a perfectionist and but I'm also quite unusual. And I know that you're wondering what an old bag like me is doing with this young <laughs> stud, Frederick, who is sexy, exciting, dynamic. He dances to work. He's, he lights up the room. Uh, it's unlike anything you've ever seen in real estate. But the more serious part of Frederick is that he is an extremely accomplished person who gets the job done. And I forged this relationship with Frederick and I convinced the developers to forge this relationship with Frederick because I know that having Frederick attached 
to the penthouse at the Four Seasons, by the way, which isn't even built yet. I mean, it's on the fifth floor. Construction is on the fifth floor. But having Frederick attached to this penthouse has meant everything because through this pandemic and through the life and the ups and downs that we're living with, Frederick's name keeps coming up in all kinds of social media, which of course is what matters today. So our penthouse continues to get attention because of Frederick. And so it's an, been an amazing relationship. Well, let's go into Frederick. Um, you're the founder of Uckland Gomez team, which has secured over 18 billion. Yes, $18 billion in sales. You've successfully sold more than 130 new developments in your career. What advice can you give agents on creative ideas and strategies for selling today in, in today's market? Well, I just want to say, not that I need to sort of defend myself with those numbers, but they, they seem maybe big or inflated and, 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 you know, crazy. And that's because I think I've followed uh, the new development path all along and really early in my career um, nothing wrong with you know opening or listing a listing a, a property a, an apartment and opening the door for the buyers and doing an open house and you know get an offer and, and negotiate and high kick and, and and you know get the commission check nothing wrong with that that is what brokers do but for me it was always going after the buildings because creatively that really excites me just like it does with for Luis, you know, to be able to be part of, sometimes we pick the architect. I love, I'm obsessed. I get aroused. Yes, I said it. I get aroused by floor plans. Do you and get an erection? A chubby. That means, it, that means like half, half hard. Because um, I don't I, know what aroused means. It means lots of things to me. Okay, well, it means like I get almost sexually aroused by floor plans. I do because for me, my job is obviously to identify the ideal buyer far uh, before, way before the building is even built, like Louis said, and, and really um, program the building with number of units, sizes on the units, prices on units, and, and maximize the sellout that could happen in years from now. And I think that's super exciting to work with the best architects and the interior designers and, and, you know, getting inspiration in fashion and hotels and, and different cities around the world and working ultimately with people like the Four Seasons and Luis. So I guess that's a different answer to the question, you know, to, to be super successful today, you can't, you cannot only be a resale broker. I mean, you, to be able to become a big, big name and a big broker, you have to dabble in the new development arena and you have to really as, you know, condominiums, as hotels merge. And as we see it on every coast, there is more of these uh, hybrid products coming uh, and being coming successful. You have to get into that. Um, and the other tip I'll give a young agent out there is to work in a collaborative environment. You know, real estate is so competitive and we're all, you know, running around uh, trying to win over the other. But if you can create this group of people, I guess a team is what I'm saying, because I have this big team and or work with people on other teams or other companies, um, you're going to do much better. That's the future. And both of you have presence in major U.S. markets. I mean, uh, Frederick, you're, you're in New York, you're in L.A. Uh, currently today, Luis, New York, Miami. Do you see a difference in how people are buying and selling uh, real estate today? What's, what's your thoughts of what's going on in the market, uh, Frederick? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're in the middle of this strange period. I feel like we're starting to come out of it. New York, I just spoke to my team prior to this conference here, and they're saying now maybe June 15 to start uh, showing apartments uh, that are vacant and that includes all the new developments. So that's around the corner. I feel like in LA here, we already started doing showings. So they did a really nice showing yesterday to a big celebrity. Um, it's starting to happen. You know, the virtual stuff is important. Obviously, we are doing this virtually. So I feel like we've all, um, this was happening anyway. I think the COVID and the, this 
period here, this two, three months was a catalyst of, of what's coming or, or was coming anyway. Uh, virtual selling, actual contracts, actual closing. I haven't seen a lot of that, but there are examples of, of especially buildings and new development and sales galleries really being effective and, and successful and translating this into the little screen you're watching now, the iPhone. Luis, if you don't mind me asking you, what, what's going on? What are you hearing in the markets? New York, Miami, um, LA, obviously Fort Lauderdale is an amazing market um, on the water. Are you getting calls? Are people moving down? What, what is, what's going on? Well, I have a lot of answers for you. First of all, I'd like to comment on the prior question you asked about agents and what they can do today different than they did yesterday. And I, I would say that um, they should be taking advantage of this quiet period that we have now to all reflect in our homes to rethink and restart and refresh and re-strategize because the world has changed. And the one thing about agents is I don't think that many of them are very flexible or they, they just do the same thing all the time. And I believe that we are now going into a different period, which is going to cause people to have a different attitude and a different thinking about things and a different way of marketing things. And life has changed. And I think agents have to change too. So that's number one. Number two, in terms of markets, because of the high tax rate in New York, and because of the trauma that has been brought about to New Yorkers by this pandemic, we're seeing a great influx, great influx of buyers going from New York to Miami because they don't want to, people do not want to be cooped up in their kind of smallish apartments in New York, not being able to go out for three and a half months. I mean, they're traumatized and pay the highest taxes in the world to do it. So people are making their residency in Florida and they want larger homes. They don't want these little small residences. And fortunately, in Fort Lauderdale, Four Seasons, we designed the building to have larger homes as well as smaller hotel residences. And people want larger homes. And uh, so the market really is leaving New York to go other places, Florida being one of them. And LA being another. Well, I don't know, because LA has got the high taxes too. So I don't know, maybe. You would have to show me the statistics. Yes, so, well, I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> but Luis is a numbers person. Yeah, I'm very like factual. So I, I think the markets really have changed. That's my bottom. I want to ask. I want to ask you a question. Um, Frederick talked about it, but in these crazy times, like Frederick, you said you spoke to your team in New York, and you could start showing apartments in the middle of June. Have your clients been responding to virtual communication? Have you bought? Have you seen them do any transactions without seeing the property in person? And what technologies are you guys using to be successful in this market? Yeah, so we have done all of the above. I mean, the team is so large that I, I oversee a big portfolio of projects at any given time. We have probably eight or nine uh, active new developments in New York City. And then I work on like four or five in the pipeline about to launch. And some of these launches have been delayed because of COVID. And then, of course, uh, closings have been difficult, but we've done a lot of virtual closings. I think in the end of the day, I think to Luis's point, at first everybody was in shock and not so flexible and very um, 
you know, it just felt very dark and everybody was paralyzed, let's say that. And then we have been trying to adapt and uh, welcoming almost this new normal of being more on the, uh, in the virtual world. I personally don't think that apartments, smaller spaces are so effective when it comes to virtual. And there's a, you know, there's a, there's, there's a whole grade, uh, I guess, a rainbow of colors when it comes to virtual showings. What we've seen after looking back at this entire period, the virtual showings that are not taking place in an apartment or in a sales gallery, but in, in fact, doing what we're doing now talking to the buyer with video so you get the human element and the emotions and the and the voice but i'm talking to you as a buyer and then i'm showing you images uh this is especially uh been successful in new development like uh, we have a project called river park in brooklyn which is i think arguably one of the largest projects in brooklyn seven different addresses that i've been overseeing for years now where we've done multiple sales in that project uh, just doing what I what, what I said uh, with renderings and sort of speaking to the buyer and, and walking him or her through the process. When you go with your camera and it's shaking, you're trying to show a kitchen, it just doesn't work. And these sort of 3D virtual tours where you can click and go through the ap apartments, even townhouses that are for New York standards, very large, um, it just doesn't look good. And I wouldn't buy that way. So I think when we talk about virtual showings and virtual, you know, virtual tours, we need to be a little more specific what's been working or not. And we find on our sites that the best contact is the human contact, the contact that goes between the salesperson and the buyer. That's the most effective contact. And really the only sites where you can do pre-sales with technology are branded sites where people understand the brand, know in advance what they're getting, like the Four Seasons, and know that they're making a good investment and their money is going to be protected and that they're secure. Because a prime example of this was when I was working on the Time Warner site, uh, when we had the uh, World Trade Center bombing. Uh, and there are two buildings on that site, a north building and a south building. And all construction, all sales, everything stopped in the city of New York, just stopped. And we were able to successfully sell the north building because we rebranded it the Mandarin Tower much faster at a much higher price than we were able to sell the South Tower, which was not branded. It was an unbranded building. It was just had an address. And so that proved to me that if you had a branded building, I mean, well-branded, a five-star branded building, in times of stress, especially, that uh, you know, it was easier to sell digitally because people understood what they were getting. And that is still the case. Well, Luis, we have to go to the next question because you brought probably one of the most innovative buildings to be built in New York, which is the AOL Time Warner Center with Mandarin, which was a great story. You, um, you, start, you founded the company Sunshine Group in 1986. 86 and are regarded as the pioneer in the art of development marketing and how it directly correlates to sales. That's what you're the best at is, is selling. What advice can you give developers in order to plan for the future in today, in today's market? What to stop. My advice is to stop everything and to rethink regroup refresh and restart because the world has changed and people expect different things because they've learned, we've all learned a lesson during this period of time. And we all want different things. We want a gym in our apartment. We want the ability to exercise in our home. And by the way, I don't want to use the word apartment or unit. I think it's not right. 
I, I, I really want to use the word residence, and that's what I've been trying to reinforce all of my life. So I believe that in your residence, you want to have your own gym. You don't want to share a gym with people downstairs. That's number one. Number two, I think you want to have your own media room. I mean, there's just no question about it. And you know, these are all uh, value added things. And the person who's doing the marketing or giving advice to the developer has to stand firm on these things because these are costly things for the developer to put in. But I believe that rather than put in all of the amenities on the lower level, you know, I'm reading my notes here from the people in the audience. It's quite- They said you look amazing, which you do. Right, it's quite interesting. Um, I, I think rather than putting in all the amenities now in the lower level, which cause everybody to share the amenities, that the amenities have to be built into the home. And the homes are gonna to have to be larger and they're gonna to have to be better designed. The kitchens are gonna to have to be better designed for baking, for, for cooking, not for looking at. They can't be just a strip kitchen in a living room. Those days are over. Uh, I just, I think that life has changed and we need to adapt to the changes. And, the biggest advice I would give to developers is to rethink. Frederick, going on that, um, Louise's advice of learning and, and so forth, what are some of the positive things that you've learned this year or even during this the last eight, eight weeks? Um, I feel like the number one thing, um, which maybe is surprising to me is I am the best dad. No, I say that jokingly, but it's true. I, I feel, you know, when you have twins, I don't know if anyone's listening to us have twins. It's a lot. It's a lot. And we just got a puppy and life just passes by so fast. And um, Frederick, I want to you know, remind you that I have twins. And okay, I so have, then you know, I have twins and I have two dogs. Okay, so you win. Right. <laughs> life, life is a big competition and you win. Um, it's, you know, I, I feel like I've been home, obviously, for three months, whatever it is now, and I have enjoyed it. And I thought I was going to lose my mind, but just by the thought of it. And I, I, it's been incredible. And all that guilt, I think, as any, I wouldn't say dad, but anyone with twins feel because you can't be with both of them. That's just how a twins is. You know, even if, it's, if, even if you're with my, my daughter, my son, there's two of them. I've been feeling this guilt since they were born. I'm not there enough. I'm working too much. I'm traveling. I'm filming TV shows left and right. I don't feel that at all. I feel extremely fulfilled actually by this period. And then, you know, I've been feeling actually a little bit guilty in a way because I'm not in New York and I, I, I love New York and it's my home and I have my team there and that has made me think a lot too of what I want in the future. So yeah, it's been been a lot of surprising uh, lessons in all this, but good ones. Well, I speak from experience. You only have one shot with your children to do it right. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, when you're thinking about planning and marketing a building, and how you're going to uh, design a building and how you're going to present a building, you only have one shot at that as well. And if you do it wrong, you pay for it later. Oh, you have no idea how many, how many buildings I think, you know, I've not been programmed right to Lisa's point, And then we as brokers take over from someone else. And the floor plans are there. They're set. The amenities are programmed wrongly or in the wrong place, like we said. And there's nothing you can do about it. So better do it right the first time, pre-development. Which one is of the, hard. One of the things, one of the things the um, users want to know, which is a question a lot asked before this, is Luis. I want to ask both of you. Tell us more about you. What are some of your highlights to your career? But also, what are some of the biggest risks that you've taken? 
Tell us more about that, the path that brought you where you are today. People like to know the risks, some of the accomplishments. Um, love to hear from both of you on this question. Well, looking back upon my life, the biggest risk I took was going from being a wife and a mother and a politician to working for Donald Trump. That was a gamble. And that was the beginning of my career. I had never worked a day in my life before. I didn't know what it was to work. And he took a gamble too. He took a gamble on me because who was I? I? Who, you know, I had not really proven myself except that I was an extremely determined woman, and a lot of people, you know, don't understand my determination. They 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 think it's aggressive, or they think it's this or it's that. I'm very focused on getting a job done, and uh, I think that was probably the biggest risk on his part and my part. But I stayed with Donald for 16 years. And, um, you know, we, we uh, accomplished and built and sold and marketed all of the Trump buildings in New York City. I consider that an amazing learning. Uh, learning, I mean, I learned I learned everything except how to lie. <laughs> I, I left that behind. <laughs> so I, you know, that prepared me for, uh, for really having the strength and the knowledge to build my own company. Uh, of course, with the help of people like Jerry Spire and Leonard Stern. I think the great thing about my life has been that I've always somehow had these mentors, Donald being one of them, and then Jerry Spire and Leonard Stern being the next in the next stage. They were there with me to help me form my own company. Uh, and having mentors is such a great thing. I've tried to be a mentor myself, but I have been very partial to women in all, with all due respect. I think that I've mentored many, 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 many very famous and incredibly talented women in our industry. And I've enjoyed doing that. I've enjoyed passing on my knowledge and experience to them because I have had the good fortune of working with the best developers in the world, the best architects in the world, the best designers in the world. The, I mean, my head is full of knowledge. I may be the age that I am, but I also have the experience and a, a level of experience that very few other people have. And the fact that I can still bring all of that to the table is, it's a fantastic thing. And I'm very grateful for the opportunities that even though, so I'm a woman in a man's world. That's really what it, it boils down to. And I'm very grateful to the men who have been able to acknowledge my talents and my skills. But you That's have the biggest, you, you, you have the biggest <laughs> balls of all of them. When, when you enter a room, no, I say this out of love, Louise, when you enter I a room- I haven't noticed uh, my balls, Frederick. Well, I have, and they are- You huge. haven't, because I've never <laughs> taken my underpants off. When you walk into a room, um, and I can only imagine throughout the years, these boardrooms full of men, 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 old, you know, powerful men, you just, you have a presence and um, you just command the room. Frederick, I want you to know that my grandson just commented on the computer. What did he say? And my granddaughter, and my granddaughter said, I do not have balls. <laughs> she has seen 
my private parts and I do not have balls. So Frederick, what about you? You've built such a successful career. What are some of your biggest accomplishments, but also some of your biggest risks that you took to get you where you are today? Well, I don't, I mean, listen, compared to Louise, I don't think I've been that successful. I think I never see myself as, you know, successful. I feel lately uh, a sense of calm, probably because of the kids and maybe living in California. I'm looking out now. That's why I have such great lighting. I'm looking out on the hills here. Um, but I think, you know, if anything, my life has been full of risk and crazy. Like it's been always, it's almost like I, I get aroused from risk. I, I'm a risk taker. You know, I left uh, Sweden at a very young age, well, 24 or something, to move to New York by myself without my parents, my brother. I left everybody and I came to New York City with a pair of sneakers. I say that uh, tr truly, I didn't have anything. I didn't have any money. I didn't have any Rolodex. I didn't have anything. And I was handing out... Um, paninis on the street outside David Letterman for 20 bucks an hour and I got a, a free panini and I, I was obsessed with New York I was in love with New York I the energy I wanted to be there I had no plan of what to do or how to do it and then you know I've, I've always been working working hard really hard I think that's uh, I gave that answer to the New York Times once when they did a story what is your sort of recipe for success or why did you become successful in real estate and the unglamorous boring answers that you work harder than anybody else but i don't see i still don't see it as a successful you know career um it's full of it might look glamorous and i think the television show helps to show some of the glamour although i do love that about our format that it shows the losses to and that we don't win every time in fact the last couple of seasons i think we lost more than we win and you see the ups and down and the hard work and the the craziness that we have to deal with on both so sides um but everything i feel like i've done including this show because everybody told me not to do it and there are people still saying that i shouldn't continue and you know it's a, it's it's risk you know it's always risk moving to california was probably the scariest thing actually scarier than when i was young and dumb and just moved to new york because I have a family, I have this big, big career in New York and a big team that I still have and I'm still involved with it, traveling back and forth. But to come here, I felt truly like a loss of identity for the, in the beginning. And I realized how, I guess, emotionally attached I was to this perception of being this big broker and starting over, like really over. I mean, people know who I am, but it's not like I came here and had a bunch of listings. I really had to earn it and I'm still earning it. And far from, you know, being a top agent, but really getting there quickly, winning a lot of business. Okay? Um, so it's all <laughs> risk and it's just how you're wired, how you're programmed, I think. But I don't By wake up way, in the morning working, and be like, I'm successful. I um, want to put in a plug for Frederick because okay. We uh, gave the exclusive listing of the penthouse at the Four Seasons Fort Lauderdale to Frederick. And it's an amazing experience. I learn from him every day. And, you know, that's part of what, what life is about. You get up every day, you learn something new, and you apply it to your set of skills. And working with Frederick has been an amazing experience. Thank you. What I think is most amazing is both you are leaders in the industry and both of you have humility and respect towards each other where you're willing to learn. And that's what makes you guys a force. And that gets to the next question to you, Louise. Let's talk about the Four Seasons residences in Fort Lauderdale. Um, this is the second development that you've worked on with this developer, um, Fort Partners, following the success of, in my opinion, one of my favorite properties in Miami, the Four Seasons um, Hotel and Residences and Surf Club. Tell us more about this oceanfront uh, destination, but also how it's going to be the game changer and change the landscape of Fort Lauderdale. Well, look, it's already the game changer because the average price is about $1,860 a foot. I mean, that's about twice the average price of any development that's ever occurred in Fort Lauderdale. It's, it's a record setting 
uh, development. And I believe the price of the penthouse, which is $35 million, must be about how much a square foot, Frederick? Um, about 3,100 interior, but then it has a lot of outdoor. So this is a record. I, I mean, it's totally record setting. It's head spinning. It's, it's, a, it's an unbelievable uh, project for Fort Lauderdale. And it is the first five star hotel. And I just want to say that the Four Seasons brand is priceless. I mean, yeah, it's it's priceless. It's it's uh it's so convincing that people buy people do buy the Four Seasons brand from the technology because they so believe in it and their followers. There are Four Seasons devotees and um, working with Ford Partners. I'm not seeing a screen, but working with Ford we're, Partners. We're actually, as you're speaking, we're playing um, the movie so everyone can see the Four Seasons in the oh, background. Oh, I see, that's good. As you're talking. So oh. then we can see the project that you guys are developing. So you could just talk away, Louise. This is, you okay. could explain, do you see the screen? Explain as we go. Where, where is this in the building? So this is a penthouse that Frederick is selling. Frederick, why don't you talk? Because you're selling this. Yeah, I think that um, this is clearly in a project that's over 65% sold. This is the crown of the building. It's uh, basically two full floors. It's a simplex 12,000 square feet interior, uh, which is insane in its own right. And does just nothing like that anywhere, not even in Miami with these kind of views right on the beach. Um, but then it has uh, a lot of, of square feet, of outdoor square feet. You have the entire Sky Park roof and you have a wraparound terrace. So a total of uh, another 10,000, actually 11,000 square feet of outdoor space. So we're talking about 23,000 square feet of space. I mean, where are you gonna get that? On top of that, you got the four seasons at the base, you got all the services, uh, and then you have the privacy of basically not seeing anyone, you know, private driver coming up into the private elevator and going straight into this residence. So if you are, like Louis said, uh, you know, living in this new world and, and lots of change, you can get the best of both worlds. You can be by yourself up in the clouds, literally, as you can see from this image here, there you can play uh, golf or mini golf outside. You have two swimming pools, you have, um, up to, I would say, eight bedrooms. It really depends also what you want to do with this space. We've been looking at different kind of floor plans and we have something really spectacular in mind. You see this pool here in glass where you're laying there, uh, drinking champagne, looking out, but you can change it to some extent since it's, it's being built right now. Um, and yeah, I'm just really, really, really proud to be part of it. So how I want to add to this is that at Fort Partners, we live and learn every day and we're constantly asking questions and polling our buyers and making changes accordingly. Uh, Tara Bernard from London is the designer and she's quite amazing and very open to making changes. I'm looking at this movie and I'm already knowing what has changed since the movie has been made. The landscaping has been done by Fernando Wong and the architect is Kobe Karp. And the really good thing is that we meet very often and are very receptive to incorporating the needs of the buyer into these plans. And certainly there's a fantastic, since this movie has been made, there's a, a fantastic media room that has been added. The internal- And I made, sorry to interrupt you, I made, or my suggestion was to make the master double the size, which I believe has been accomplished. So, you're the master of the universe and you buy something like this and you have the best master anywhere in Florida or maybe in the United States. 
So in addition to making the master twice the size, we've added an a fabulous media room. We've added a crafts room because as you see from this time that people have been sort of in their homes for three and a half months, they all sort of have hobbies and things that they like to do at home. We've added a children's playroom. We've added a baking center in the kitchen so that the family likes to bake cake and be together, can do that. And as we go along, we make changes according to the challenges that are confronted, we are confronted by. And I must say that the virus has given us, you know, a lot of challenges that we need to meet. And we do so on a current basis. So Frederick, um, you've been given the exclusive on this magnificent, you know, amazing penthouse. Who should buy it? Um, who, who do you think is the buyer? What well, are some of the highlights of the penthouse? I have to say during, well, prior to this mm -hmm. new normal and during it, we've had substantial interest. So not to say that we have sold it yet, but there are people circulating it seriously and who's ultimately going to buy it it could be somebody local it could be somebody from new york i think ultimately someone from you know northeast coast um i mean it could be somebody internationally uh from international looking at the four seasons i think as an investment i think it's it can never be built again you just can't it can't be, you know, at least not with the connection to the Four Seasons. The size of it, you know, 23,000 square feet is just beyond anything I've really seen. I mean, I'm representing a building here in LA, which uh, has a 20,000 square foot floor plate, but this is larger, uh, the pencils that is. And I think for 35 million, I actually think it's a really good price for the buyer. Mm. And like all, I can say is, all I can say is I'm very jealous of whomever is going to buy that. So I put that in the contract with Luis that, her, her and I are going to be invited to dinner with the buyer first night of closing. So I'd like to add that Fort Lauderdale has become uh, a mecca of activity in, in the, on this, this coast of Florida. The airport is a major international airport. The marina is a major marina. The train goes from Miami to all the way to Orlando. Uh, People now, it's an amazing uh, phenomenon that, and, and there's the art center, and there's the museum. I mean, Fort Lauderdale is an amazing place. And during this time of this, uh, you know, virus, people have been chartering boats, yachts, and living on the yachts in Fort Lauderdale and visiting the site. So there's this, this whole boating world is, uh, is part of the environment and it's very exciting. Well, you spoke about it when we were watching the video, uh, Louise, that since the property's not built yet, you've had the ability to be able to adjust interior design elements with your designers, um, Tara Bernard and Kobe Karp to perfection. What are some of the changes that you've made listening to the customers and, 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 and talking to the current environment? Because as you said, things have changed now from three months ago. Right, well, I think I mentioned them because we've increased the size of the master bedroom. We've added a children's playroom. We've added a home gym that's a serious gym where people don't have to go to a communal gym. We've added a media room. So people have their own media room where they don't have to go. I mean, up until now, buildings have been designed with the common elements on a certain floor, 46 or 21 or 17 and everybody had to leave their apartment and go to the common elements on a certain floor to be together. Now we've learned during this time of this virus or whatever you wanna call it, 
that those things, you know, maybe we, we don't design a home like that. Maybe we design a home that incorporates those amenities into the home. Maybe we don't design a strip kitchen. Maybe we go back to designing a real kitchen with real capability to cook and bake and talk and have a family in there and, you know, real kitchens like we used to have in the old days. I mean, the whole program is changing because needs are changing. And the one thing you have to do when you're a developer is be flexible and, be, and have the ability to change, especially when you're just building a building. Once it's built, there's very little you can do about it. But when you're building it and planning it and designing it, that's the time to really think about what you're doing, what size the unit should be, and what, what you should do with these amenities. So we, we are of the mindset now that there should be more incorporated within the home rather than the common element floor or the, the one floor that has everything. Can we kiss now? And what's your thoughts, Frederick? No, I've, <laughs> I've, always want, I've always wanted to kiss you. I think it's time. Come on, give him a kiss, Louise. Wait, I, I have to get my mask. <laughs> no. Come on, just a quick. Thank you. So, Frederick, you were starting to build your brand in South Florida. Um, do you envision more New Yorkers will be making their way to South Florida? What's your thoughts on... You know, a lot of the New Yorkers are in Hamptons now, and they're telling me if schools don't start, a lot are looking into South Florida if the schools don't start in September. Where, where do you, what do you think is going to happen, let's say schools don't start in September with, with a lot of your high net worth clients? Well, I think we kind of already talked about it in the sense that this already began because of tax reasons. This exodus, if you want, a bunch of... That's my dog. I'm sorry. Can you What's your dog's dog name, up? Louise? Can we see? My dog's dog? name is Patch and Benny. And if you'd like to see oh, them, amazing. they're so adorable, I can't tell you. Yeah, bring them on. Come on, a cameo would be okay. great. Okay. Um, I'm getting comments from the audience that they would like to see them. We do. Yes. Here. Where are you? And while she's looking for the dogs, maybe I'll just finish that and say, you we've already seen this happening. It's been happening for a while. And I think that when people can start traveling again and this summer and to answer your question, September, yes, we're going to see it a lot more. Oh my God. He is cute. Is it he? Yeah. I met him, but he doesn't remember me. So Seth, you, don't, what look, do you, envision? you don't look like you're a dog person. No, you look like, a cat, you look like a cat person. <laughs> no, no, I'm not a cat person. I'm more of a dog. I have a pet business, so I love dogs. I love animals. So these are wonderful dogs. They're Cavachons, which are crossbreeds between a Bichon and a um, Cavalier, King Charles Cavalier. Your dog looks very happy being on camera. Yeah, should I take him off? Star. No, I love it. It's amazing. Keep it going. Frederick, you it's what did you envision the rest of 2000? No, I think it's amazing. Keep it. Your dog's beautiful. Listen, and I learned chilling. the art of distraction from Donald Trump. And what's that? Share it with us. Any, I learned the art of distraction. Right now, my distraction is the dog. And I learned not to lie. And I, earned the, I learned the art of distraction. Okay. Well, you guys are you guys are leaders. We're almost at the end, but I would love to get the envision since you don't lie. What the rest of 2020 is going to look like? You know the market. You've been doing this for a long time, both of you. People read the news. The stock market's up. You hear doom. What what do we what can we envision for the remainder of 2020? I think it's going to be a very slow summer uh, for all the obvious reasons. And I think after sort of Labor Day, people hopefully will come back with a 
fresh mind. There's going to be a lot of activity everywhere in the market in the fall. There might not be at, you know, ASCII prices or bidding wars, but there's going to be a lot of deals out there. And there are other buildings, not ours, but there are the buildings where they have to sort of unload some inventory and there's going to be great discounts. I do, however, believe that after the election, uh, let's say January 1st or whatever, like in the next 2021, 20, spring of 21 is going to be crazy. So get ready. This could be actually a good time to buy, you know? So I have a totally different opinion. Good. But, you know, that's the reason why or we brought Frederick on to the uh, development of the Four Seasons was to benefit from his opinions and advice and success and fame and all of that. And it's really good when you have differing opinions. But I will say that the we are not suffering at all in the Florida, in the Miami market, in the Palm Beach market, in the Fort Lauderdale market. We, we are going to have a very successful summer. What has happened is that people who came to Florida for the winter stayed here because you know there's been these stay at home orders in case you haven't noticed we've all been at home for the past three and a half months actually i've enjoyed every minute of it because i formed my advisory board and you know it just gave me time to rethink and reformat and restructure my entire company but it's, it's really the, the market here, all these people have stayed here in their homes and they have no place to go. And nobody is traveling because there are no, every day the flights get canceled, whether it's to New York or London or every day the flights are canceled and changed. And so people are staying here for the summer. They're not moving. And what are they doing? They are buying residences in the Four Seasons because once again, the Four Seasons an established brand. People are secure with it. People are safe with it. People feel good about it. People know that their money is going to appreciate over time. That's what history proves. There's no bargaining at the Four Seasons, by the way. There's no negotiating. For full disclosure, I meant, you know, nationwide. I wasn't talking about our project when I answered that No, question. no, I'm, okay. but, but listen, I'm talking about Florida. Florida yeah, is I not know. suffering. I do not believe, I believe that you have to, you cannot ask that question or answer it about all markets. Each market is different. Correct. I Correct. think New York is an incredible challenge. And I look forward to the challenge. I look forward to the challenge of turning around the market in New York. I, I just think all markets are different. I think the Texas market is really strong. I think the Nevada market is really strong. I think markets uh, in states where taxes are reasonable and low and people can afford to live will be just great this summer. One question that I'd like to know, when you guys see each other, what's the first thing you guys are going to do? Kiss. No, what well, we just did. No, well, now I'm putting and, up the mask. <laughs> and how did you guys meet? Is there a funny story or how did you guys meet? Frederick, when you first wanna, met Luis. We, we met in a sex parlor. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we, uh, do we remember how we met, love? Um, yes, we I, met I, in the bar, sex bar on 60th Street between first and second. I think it's called Sandals or Booties or something. <laughs> I have never <laughs> set my foot there. I have no, no offense to anybody like sex clubs, but no. Um, I think that the first time we actually, I mean, we had numerous phone calls, but I think it was that night you invited us to dinner, could have been. Um, and it was a really nice night. I felt like we were on a date. Can I say that? Um, I wish. <laughs> well, I felt like we were on a date. Oh my God, this is getting strange. But 
I think the first thing we're going to do together is we're going to going to give each other a big hug. I want to give you a big hug and maybe have some drinks together. That'd be By really the nice. Way, one of the most um, satisfying thing to me in my life has been to mentor people. I feel very lucky. I feel that I've been fortunate to have people like Donald Trump or Jerry Spire or Leonard Stern mentor me. Stephen Roth, give me the best of what they know. Teach me everything that they know. Pull me along, mentor me. And I, in turn, have been mentoring many people in my life. And it, it gives me a lot of satisfaction to do that. And probably when I met Frederick, I was mentoring him because I'm always mentoring. And I love to mentor. It's, it's a great, great thing. Well, I want to, um, I know both of you are very busy. Um, it's an honor to have both you guys on the Hope Residence webinar and share a lot of your insight on the market, but also uh, being from South Florida. I love Fort Lauderdale. As you said at Louise, it's the yachting capital of the world. And I think this project is a complete game changer for the market. And I think you put together an amazing um, team. And I wish you guys success and a lot of, I can't wait for you to uh, sell the property, uh, Frederick, and make news. Oh, in, uh, we, another we will. Beth, do you we know will. the Ashis who are the developers? I, I mean, I, 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 I don't know them personally, but I just know their projects. And I have to tell you, to me, and I'm not saying it because you're on the, um, the panel and they were the development property, um, the Four Seasons Surfside was a, complete game changer for Miami, creating a complete different property, a different vibe. We actually did a big dinner there um, before the, the, the virus, like a 40 person dinner, but it's one of my favorite projects. Um, and I think if it comes as at that level, it's gonna be a complete game changer for the Fort Lauderdale market. So I was involved with that development from day one. And it would be my great pleasure to have you to lunch with the developers at the surf club. I'm very proud of it. Very, 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 very proud of it. And, you know, Richard Meyer is there. He spent I gotta go. quarantine there. What? <laughs> I think it was somebody who had to tune out. I don't know. <laughs> what happened? It's your management team. You have a five o'clock webinar, Louise. We got to, you know, oh, you got to go okay. and you got to do the five o'clock okay. call. Oh, I thought we no, were I appreciate taking questions it. from the can, audience. But can we, can we, we were, I guess I heard someone I have to go. So I didn't can know. We thank, what, can we thank, thank everybody? Can we, can we, Louise and I thank everybody who joined? Um, are we taking yes, questions? Please. Oh, okay. We are. Okay. Sorry. Yes, questions if you want, Louise. Yes. So we, the, I see the questions coming up on the screen. Yes. Yeah, so, um, Let's go to you, Luis. Um, actually, it was a question I asked. I love the art behind you. Who is it by? Pardon Luis. me? Oh, Ian Davenport. He's an English artist who is um, featured in the Tate Museum in London and many museums around the world. And Frederick, why don't you share who the artist behind um, you, 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 the artist at your house, too? Well, yeah, I'm sitting in my husband's art studio because it's the only quiet place at the house because the kids and the dogs and you can see some of his storm storm series in the back. Um, I love it down here. It's a, my creative juices get flowing here. By the One way, the questions, uh, I, I just have to tell you that the comments coming in about the panel are fantastic. People are saying well, I mean, they really enjoyed this. <laughs> We have two icons, I mean, two marketing geniuses. This is a huge uh, treat to have both of you share your knowledge um, to, to, to everyone. So we're very appreciative. A good question that, because uh, both of you are pet owners, which actually I'd love to get your thoughts because you didn't touch upon it, is people have been relying even more on their pets for emotional support during this time. Do you think people will invest more in spaces for their pets in the home? Well, what is the question exactly? <laughs> no, 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 no problem. People have been uh, relying even more on their pets for emotional support during these times. 
Yes, I know. Do you think I, people will invest more in spaces in their home for their pets, make pets a little bit, you know, because you can't walk them, you know, things have changed. I know, but listen to this. Better. At the four seasons, we have a pets for all seasons plan. So your pets are taken care of exactly like you are. Your pets are treated like they're a guest. So the pets are an integral part of life at the Four Seasons. That's Frederick, what I this is a great question. Um, if you had to give advice to someone, your young self when you started, what would you tell them today? I would tell them to get a mentor, get the right mentor, to be honest and be credible at all times. That's what I would say. Protect their reputation. How about Wait, you, what's the, what was the question? What I would Look, say to the, my younger self? Uh, Frederick, if you had to tell your younger self one thing, oh. what would it be? I think that I'm you are good just like you are, just as you are. And I would give my little Frederick a big hug. That's a totally different I mean, point of view, you understand? Yeah, that's why. We, this my is point of view is you can always be better. And Frederick's point of view is he loves himself. And I wish no, I could love no, myself, but no, I can't. No. So I continue is, to go um, to a psychiatrist. I think this is a little Donald in you twisting things. Um, that's not what I said at all. Actually, I said something very loving. And it wasn't about loving yourself. It was about, you know, uh, believing in what you're capable of doing when you're young and you might have insecurities or you might have questions about your future. But listen, that's why it's amazing to have two different opinions. Like Louise said, can you imagine having two Louises or two Fredericks? That would be a lot. So thank God this is one of us. No, there are this two is a good of question. Us. Frederick, there are two of us and each okay. one contributes our skills and talents. Right. Who always wins the arguments? You or um, Luis or Frederick? Who always wins the argument? We don't argue. <laughs> <laughs> Luis, this is a great question. What are the traits of the best sales sales agents you've worked with? Uh, I would say one is that they listen. They have to listen. And if they don't listen to the people they're talking to or the buyers they're dealing with, they lose. So they can't waste the buyer's time. And they have to listen, absorb, and have the intelligence to not waste the buyer's time and give the buyer what they need. I think that's so important. And I think so many agents are missing that one skill, listening to other people. And then I would say they have to know their product thoroughly and they have to know the comps or else they're lost. I mean, I don't see how they can sell properly without those two things. I think that's really important. And they have to know the market. Knowing the market to me is incredibly important. You have to know what your competition is at all times. And you have to know what your competition isn't. And also maybe more, most importantly, you have to have fun in the sense that you have to be fun. I always said nobody wants to work with somebody who's boring. And there's so many negative people out there. There's so many, you gotta be realistic about certain things, but you can bring joy. That's why I love working with you, Louise. You're a tough one, but you make me laugh a lot. I hopefully do that with you. Um, I have to pee so badly. I'm, I'm like crossing well, that, my legs. That's leg. a good way. I'm crossing I think my legs. Way, um... <laughs> I have to pee so badly. Can I go, please? Yes. I mean, we're done, we're, right? But don't wet we your are, pants. We are done. Please don't wet your we're pants done. or I'll send you. You know, this program, you know who sponsors it? Depends. Oh. Depends. <laughs> If I, Frederick, depend, if I depend thank on you the so four much. season, I would have 12 bathrooms to choose from. Thank you guys so Frederick, much. Frederick, thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Luis, thank you for your time. And it's enjoy the rest pleasure. of your day. Thank you. Thank Love you. you guys. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.
a lot of wonderful comments.